Discover how the Word of God can bring a change in your life through the teachings of Bishop Eddie Addy. Bishop Eddie Addy is an assistant to Bishop Daniel Mills and serves as the resident bishop of the Macarius Church. Anointed, energetic, and a practical teacher, the servant of God will inspire you with practical teaching of the Word of God that will refresh you, energize you, and bring healing to your body, soul, and spirit. Now, to the message. with our God. If you believe it, shout amen. amen. Wow, what a blessing. Let us pray. Father, thanks a million for the great privilege we have to be here this evening, fellowshipping with your spirit, with one another, and experiencing your mighty power. This evening, walk amongst us. Open our eyes and do marvelous things. Energize us to become your true children, children of faith, children who believe in their God, the God of the impossible. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Faith secrets of mighty men. Faith secrets of mighty men. Men. First Samuel 22, we are reading from verse 1. It says, David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave of Adullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. And everyone that was in distress, and everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented gathered themselves unto him. And he became a captain over them. And there were with him about 400 men. Beautiful. This is David running away from Saul. And when he gets to a place, Saul is the king, was the king of Israel at the time, whose son was called Jonathan, and he became David's best friend. And then when Saul felt, he felt threatened by David, primarily because he was the king. Then they were going to fight the Philistines which is another group of people. They come from a place called Philistine. Their towns were Gath and so on, where Goliath came from. So Goliath came from their town and threatened the Israelites that this battle they are going to fight, they are not doing it like the normal one where all the soldiers fight together. No, this one, he will stand and they should also choose a man. So he's on the side of Philistines and then David, anybody at all who can come from the Israelite side should come. If the, the, the two of them, only the two will fight. Whoever wins means the whole nation has won. Can you imagine such a fight? Let's say Ghana is going to play Nigeria. Then they say choose one player and then they will also choose a player. Then they will play gata to gata. The one who wins has won the match. <laughs> I think we are playing Nigeria in the World Cup, isn't it? Qualifiers. Hey, Ghana for you. <laughs> I think some people have stopped praying for Ghana Black Stars because like, my prayer will not do anything. <laughs> hey, please don't lose hope so much. Okay? 
So it so happened that nobody in Israel could face Goliath. And David had gone to the battlefield. He was not a soldier. He was going to give food to his brothers. And he heard Goliath threatening. Then he said, ah, why has no one stood up to fight this man? And they say, hey, he's a very mighty man of war. Even his height, he's taller than all the men. He's a giant. So he's, he's 18 feet. Hey, wow. He's not 18. He himself, his stature, his height is like my feet. And normally, even the tallest person amongst us here, I don't know who is the tallest in the church. Eh? Who? Maybe Edward. Rodney. And how, where is Rod, how tall are you? Well, six two. And you are how tall? Six one. Yeah, so he's the reigning champion. <laughs> Who is six three? We are looking for men. Ah. <laughs> so listen oh. So even amongst us here, the tallest is like six two. And Goliath is nine feet. So six, seven, eight, nine. Before you see him coming. So even, and he's not just tall. You know, some people are tall, but they are lanky. Uh-huh. Those ones, the wind can blow them down. <laughs> and some people are tall and huge as well. And Goliath was that type, like a wrestler. Very big, shoulders are big, thighs, everything is big. Very strong looking, and not just looks, but strong too. In fact, they say that his, I think his sword, uh, no, no, his spear, the shaft of the spear, like the wooden part, is like a weaver's beam. Have you ever seen a, 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 a kente weaver before? Like those who weave kente, they have some wood that braces their equipment. Say, hey, one of those things, that's the, the, the weight of Goliath's spear, the shaft. Not the metal part. Too. The metal part is heavy. It's heavier even than the shaft. And the shaft alone is like a weaver's beam. Like maybe something like this one. Yes. 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 He, he, his hand, even you, your hand, if you extend your hand, you can hold a piston, the, the, the fufu pounding piston, isn't it? Because your, your, it can fit into your palm. Yeah. When somebody's palms are bigger than yours, that fufu piston will be like match stick. So they have to get a bigger one for him. Otherwise, he can't feel comfortable pounding the fufu. <laughs> So his spear heart was very big. Okay, so David comes along and, and decides that he's going to fight him. He's a small boy, but he says, I serve a mighty God. And he will give this Philistine into my hand. And then he went to the battle and killed Goliath with a stone. <laughs> Not a sword, a stone. Goliath was coming then. He took you know, like children of Ghana, we have catapult. It's a Y stick and with a, a rubber band type of a strong rubber band. Then you put a stone, then you stretch it and release it. And it can find a target depending on how skillful you are. And David had a sling. In those days, they don't use tire. We call it tire. That's the catapult. But they use a sling. So it's like a, a kind of, it's also like a leather sort of string. And then the stone part is in the middle and he holds the stone. Then they, they wind it like that and release one part. And the stone will go in a particular direction. So depending on how skillful you are, you will hit the target. So he, he prayed to God. He went to the, the, the stream, the riverside, the riverbed, and found five stones. And put one inside, one inside and held it. And Goliath was clad from head to toe with a coat of mail, like a, a metal breastplate and helmet. Everything was metal. The only portion that was not protected was some small space between the, 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 when the, uh, his helmet ends and then his face begins. 
So there was just a small opening there. And that is where God guided the missile and he found the target. <laughs> Goliath fell down. He cut off his head. He lifted it up. Israel shouted. The Philistines took off. So Israel won. When they came back, the women of the town sang, <laughs> Saul has killed his one thousands and David his ten thousands. Oh, meanwhile, Saul liked David. Oh, Saul liked David. There was no problem at all. He even gave him his armor to go and fight. But this song, you know, the type of praises that comparing. I mean, they didn't need to compare, but you know, they are just like us now. We also like comparing. This one, uh, you put on status. Wow, brother David, brother David, brother David. Oh, wow. <laughs> For the praises of men. So, when Saul heard it, it really pained him. Yes, because he had done them good. Look, he had led them for years and fought many battles and won many battles. And all the, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> all the battles and all the fights, you realize that they made it 1,000. And then the one that David had fought, this one man that he killed. They say he has killed what? 10,000. Do you see? So it's like normally if, if you were the one, you also, it will pain you because even you cry, you have not slain 1,000. Yours is like two people. <laughs> but he had killed, they say 1,000. How can you say 1,000? Do you see? Anyway, so a stirred jealousy in the heart of King Saul. I'm going to be preaching this for a couple of weeks, so I'm, 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 I want to just lay this foundation for you. So when David came out and Saul saw him, it pained him, so he eyed him from that day. Eyed him. It's like me, they have prescribed to me 1,000 and you 10,000. What more will they do than they will now, they will now give you the kingdom? See? So, women, no, you have to be careful. Visiting preacher, B comes to preach, no, say, ah, the man is powerful, oh, what? I mean, yeah, Bishop preaches, but this man, dear, hey, oh, fireman, fireman. Fireman, fireman. Oh, come and pour seats, buy him a car. I've, I've seen before where a church bought a visiting preacher a four wheel drive. And they had never done anything like that for the pastor. It was not appropriate. Because when somebody's with you for a long time, you may not do much for him. Because it's like you know him, you know what he's done. Anyway, so. He started at one time chasing David and seeking for opportunity to kill him before he becomes, some people now, there's a coup d'etat and they lift him up and say he's the king because he's a better man. And Saul made him the captain of the army and promised him his daughter. He said, I'll give my daughter to him to be a snare unto him. I think the girl was some way. You know, some... Uh, <laughs> Sometimes when there are some, some way people in the house and somebody is coming to marry one, the people say, oh, praise God. We are really grateful. God bless you. Very disrespectful girl. They won't train her and retrain her. They will leave her to go into the marriage. Go and prepare the man. Then after, then they will turn against the man that he is some way. And they know their own sister too. Some of you, you know your sister. Some way, pa. Now, when there's the thing becoming a divorce, the man, as for men, dear, as for men, you know how men are. You see, maybe you know your sister too that you, you, you won't like to stay with your sister in the same house. Yes, you, you won't marry your sister. That, or if you had a beloved who showed even the slightest trait 
of your sister's qualities. Oh, you run away. But when you see your sister going to marry someone, then you turn against the person. You know, you know how your sister is. And you sisters who are some way, eh? Somebody will find you, marry you. No, I will nim say a day. Then you go and sit there and be, be misbehaving. Anyway, this one it just came to pass. So I'm making a point that <laughs> yes. No, no, no. Sisters, you have to be grateful. You see, because when somebody marries you, you can feel that, oh, you would have been married anyway. But you see, there are more beautiful girls than you who are not married. So you better be careful. When you get somebody, be humble. And don't be insulting and disrespectful. In some way. Argumentative. Always arguing. Everything is an argument. Always opposed. You are you you are forward, forward. Always opposed to any idea. It's just an idea. Once he has brought it up, it's not good. Yes. Once he has said it, it's not. So the only things that work are good morning and good evening or good night. Yes. The only things that work. The ones that work that there will be no argument is good morning. Because that one you can't say, oh, what is good about... Anyway, some people too even can say that, what is good about the morning? <laughs> I mean, that one is extreme. <laughs> what is good about the morning? Ah, Every day you say good morning, good morning. We have been in this house. What has been good in this house? For you to come and say good morning. Hey! You people who have that character, eh? be careful. I'm telling you. Change your way. See, maybe your mother may not tell you straight. Or she has been saying it and you are bored with her, so she has stopped talking. Yeah. So it, it, it translates to mean that maybe you are now better. At first, my mother was not happy with me. Now, she doesn't talk. She has stopped talking. She doesn't want to talk again. Well, you are some way. <laughs> they can't change you. So now let the church speak. Let the word minister to you. Yes. A lady was telling me she was in Trotro and some lady said something. I don't know whether she, where she would stop or the change or and she heard what the guy said. And, and the guys uh, the, the, the the guy said, the mate said oh, it was nothing be her. The girl who is in the car, they are going to drop you. Or whatever. You don't have a car. You are sitting somebody, you have gone to the trotro. The man is made a comment, something be there. He said, The girl took the man on. Hey, and she said, What she said to me was that, Oh, 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 oh independent girls are oh, more a BB power, oh, independent girls. It's like girls who, who are on their own. <laughs> they are really some way independent. It's like as my mate in the kind, and the way I will get Lee, it to share mate. You know, so, cha, 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 cha. It's like what the mate said is nothing. But an independent girl. So brothers, when you see a girl who has rented a flat <laughs> and has lived on her own for some one, two years or three years and you are going to marry her, it's an independent, independent girl. It's a highly inflammable fuel tanker. So if you, are, if you have been independent, I'm telling you that you know yourself. You see, what it is is that you have survived. You see, so you have been hardened by your survivor. So you, you, are, you are not soft. Yeah, you are not soft. Yeah. You are not easily controlled. And if somebody says, Oh, can you make this? Uh, 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 because you are used to, it's like you have to fight your way and survive. So we are belligerent. Yes. You have a bellicose posture already. Yes. So if the person says the thing, it doesn't, it's like the sentence, no, it's not well constructed. Like maybe the comma was not put at the right place. Hey. <laughs> it's like, eh? and you say what? You say what? Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> you see, but when the person is beautiful, eh, you don't know that there's any problem. 
Yeah. Because you brothers there, a face that is nice is what you like. But I don't know that a face that is nice, hair that is long, does not r- translate into respect, niceness, softness, gentleness, meekness, and cooking. And honor. Uh, bring my pulpit. I'm going to preach. Yeah. So, I don't know how this one came in, but I think it's good. Yeah. Somebody needs that message today. Anyway, so Saul gave his daughter to marriage into marriage to David. Even after some time, he took the he gave her to somebody else. Yeah. It's like, I've changed my mind. Yeah. I've taken my daughter away. You won't get her again. Hey, it was not easy for him. He had to go and force his way and get her. He even told him that if he wants her, you, know, you promise that if he kills, anyone who kills will, will get your daughter. After he finished, if he wants the daughter, no. You should bring the four skins, hundred of them, as a dowry for her. A stubborn girl. And they are paying dowry with hundred pieces that have been cut. The mouth has been cut, and the the the, the sack you know, is being brought for your head. Hey, that you are you are really some way for, for such a dowry to be used to, to marry you. He brought two hundred, so that he will be just like okay, I hand only hundred. Said so no, two hundred. He brought them so that you use. As his. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe some of them didn't work well or they were not cut well or something I don't know. I won't make that mistake I don't want to go back a second time I just, he brought hundreds of them anyway so Saul turned against David and chased him from cave to cave mountain to mountain valley to valley seeking to kill him hey it's like you will not live you this boy one time David saw him and he cut the hem of his garment and said my father, my lord, my master, I have nothing against you. See, the, the, your bottle of water that you drink, I did not, I picked it. See, the hem of your garment, I cut it, I could have killed you. I don't have any such bad intention. Why do you seek my life? Still, he wouldn't listen. So, while David was running away, then came these discontented, disgruntled, and people who are in debt, like the people who are in the town, they can't pay their debt. I don't know whether they owe the government, but <laughs> they were in debt, and they found that, look, this man is also struggling like us. Let's just join him. <laughs> Do you see? A crowd of, they say that a crowd of fellow sufferers is a kind of comfort in misery. So it's like if you fail an exam, so let me, let me explain it. <laughs> a crowd of fellow sufferers is a kind of comfort in misery. When you do an exam and you get 21% and you are miserable in your misery, when you discover that half of the class also had less than 30, you are comforted. It's a kind of comfort in misery. That's what it means. <laughs> Uh, there was a general bombing so only one person had 51 so now they say they will do the exam again so oh or they'll give everybody 30 plus 30 so oh okay you are comforted but if you are the only one who failed you don't have a crowd to comfort you in your misery by their own suffering anyway so what does it say in verse 2 verse 2 he says and everyone that was in distress, and everyone that was in debt, you see, and everyone that was discontented. Give us the message Bible, message Bible, message Bible, to the cave of Adullam. When his brothers and others associated with his family heard where he was, they came down and joined him. Not only that, but all who were down on their luck, came, uh, it says, uh, down on their luck. Oh. Is that right? 
uh, came around. Uh, yeah, I, I wasn't reading that thing well. Came around. Losers and vagrants and misfits of all sorts. David became their leader. There were about 400 in all. So, vagrants. Eh, what are vagrants? People who are wondrous. Hmm? They don't have any proper living place. The dictionary says, a person without a settled home or regular work who wanders from place to place. A person without a stable address. <laughs> he is homeless. These are the people that came to be. You see, I'm trying to let you see the kind of people who were around David. Misfits. I saw a, a movie the other day, Misfits. I don't know what it is about, but misfits are what? What type of people are misfits? They don't fit. <laughs> they, they don't fit any group. They are not on any WhatsApp platform. Because they didn't go to any school that has a group. They are not in Basanta, so they are not in a group. They are not in a, an ashes group, uh, 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 singers group, choir group, Christians group, pastors group. Shepherds group, members group, they are not, they are not, they don't have any group, they are, they are persona non grata. And David became their leader. So here is David, somebody that has been anointed king by uh, uh, prophet Samuel, and yet his membership, the membership of his congregation. Uh, his fan base are misfits, vagrants, losers, down on their luck people. <laughs> do, you, do you fit, are you in any of these categories? I'll tell you what God will do with people, even no matter their background. These distressed and those in debt and discontented people later became David's mighty men. In First Chronicles 11, and verse 4, And David and all Israel went to Jerusalem, which is Jebus, where the Jebusites were the inhabitants of the land. And the inhabitants of Jebus said to David, Thou shalt not come hither. Nevertheless, David took the castle of Zion, which is the city of David. And David said, Whosoever smited the Jebusites, first shall be chief and captain. So Joab, the son of Zeruiah, went first up and was chief. And David dwelt in the castle. Therefore they called it the city of David. And he built the city round about, even from Milo round about. And Joab repaired the rest of the city. So David works greater and greater for the Lord of hosts was with him. Verse 10. These also are the chief of the mighty men whom David had, who strengthened themselves with him in his kingdom and with all Israel to make him king according to the word of the Lord concerning Israel. So these men, you see David was strengthened by the Lord and also by these men, these disgruntled misfits, vagrants, huh? down on the alack people were the ones when he became king, strengthened themselves to be around him. Then the Bible lists them. Verse 11, verse 11 says, and this is the number of the mighty men whom David had, Jashobim. I, I, I prefer it in 2 Samuel uh, 23 from verse 8. Yes. 2 Samuel 23 from verse 8. He says, these be the names of the mighty men whom David had, the Takmonites, that sat in the seat, chief among the captains, huh, the same was Adino the Esmite. He's also called Jashobim. Yes. He lift up his spear against 800 men whom he slew at one time. You may be down on your luck, but when you meet a mighty God and you meet somebody whom God has called and who is anointed, I tell you, you can be converted to someone who can slay 800 at one time. After him was Eliezer, the son of Dodo, 
the Ahuhite, one of the three mighty men with David when they defied the Philistines that were there gathered together to battle. And the men of Israel were gone away. And he rose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary and his hand cleaved and cleaved unto the sword. And the Lord wrought a great victory that day by only his hand. And the people returned after him only to, to take the spoil. This is Eliezer, the son of Dodo. After him was Shammah, the son of Agi, the Hararite. These were down and outers. These were the people they called, I mean, losers. And people that they called in debt, misfits. Discontented people. But in the, in the, in, in the presence of an anointing and in the presence of God's mighty man, you can be turned to someone who can slay 800 that is why I believe there will be people here you look like a down and outer down on your luck loser, you are a debtor you don't, you are, you, you don't fit you are a misfit a misfit from your home, misfit among your classmates misfit in your, uh, where, your workplace you are misfit around the neighborhood but there is a God there is a God he can make you a pastor with more than 300 members This way, you see, that's why I try to help you to understand the type of people that were around the man that went to be with him in the cave. The, the residential address was Ad, Cave Adulam. I don't know whether it had a number 007. He lifted. The people had left. There was nobody around. Then some, he heard some, choo, 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 choo. some Philistines had come to the place and they were trying to steal things. He beat them beer. When the people came, they only came to find their gold, their, their dresses, everything, and they came to collect the store. But he had finished the work. It's like the normal way they do uh, movies. They will beat the bloomer, will beat the bad people, kill all of them. I mean, he will jump buildings, everything, kill. Then when he kills the last person, then you hear, him. Yeah. Oh, God will use you. Oh, God will use you. One day when they return, they will see the great works the Lord has used you to accomplish. After him, yes, was Shammah, the son of Agi, the Hararite. And the Philistines were gathered together and into a troop. Where was a piece of ground full of lentils and the people fled from the Philistines. But Shammah alone. So I always have a dog in my house called Shammah. Wow. That when we are all not in the house, Shammah can be there to defend the territory. Every time I have a dog, I call Shammah. Now the last Shammah has died, so I have to get a new Shammah. Yes. But he stood in the midst of the ground huh, and defended it and slew the Philistines and the Lord wrought a great victory that day. I like this. He says, and three, you see, just to remind you that they were there in the cave of Adullam, the Bible says, and three of the 30 chiefs went down and came to David in the harvest time unto the cave of Adullam. And the troop of the Philistines pitched in the valley of Raphaim. And David long, David was in the hole. And the garrison of the Philistines were in, in, then in Bethlehem. And David longed and said, Oh, that one will give me to drink of the waters of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gates. You see, the Philistines are at Bethlehem. There's a well there. What Adulam cave mu? And now you, you are longing for water from Bethlehem. Hey! And the Bible says that but these three men, they broke through the host of the Philistines and drew the water from the well of Bethlehem and brought it to David. Nevertheless, David did not drink. He poured it out unto the Lord. You see, some of you, if you are working under someone and the person says, go and do something, you say, ah, you, you won't fast, you say, we should fast. I mean, I told the people that have stopped fasting this type of clay, we fast, that you don't eat anything for a long time throughout the day. Oh, Jai. I mean, track three days dry now. Eh? When I was a pastor doing three days dry, leading prayer meeting, I woke up one day, I couldn't walk. My whole body was vibrating. 
I said, if I wasn't a pastor, the anchor made it here. But I was a pastor, so I had to endure and come and lead the prayer meeting in the evening. I couldn't pray the whole day until the evening. Well, voice no cry was not coming. But I said, I'm doing three days dry. After that, three days without water. And then after that, another sometime with only water. Then after that, another one with only juices or something. Just say, clay I was sowing my seeds for today. Thank you. And you that it has now come to your turn. You should do the fast. Six to six, twelve hours. Like that, three days. Every other day, you don't eat. You eat today, tomorrow, you don't eat. The next day, you eat tomorrow. You eat once, so in between the days. Then you don't eat again the next day like that. It's like, hey! You say, hey! We will call lighter. So almost if you be the variegated fast. Muntimin fast. Muntimin cha fast. I must say, variegated fast. We can also phone it the D. Hey, hey! We must say, hey, here for no go here fast enough. I'm very much good D. They are going to eat. They, you, you can do the fast. We, we are going to eat. <laughs> hey, but you see. David said, I want water. He himself didn't go. But there must always be people who are ready. Yeah. Who will do the bus center work. Even though we have not seen you bashing people. Because if ever now the original will preach. Then the uncle will do my fini and family. Yes. Now, if ever now, the uncle will do my fini and family. It's like, hey, man of God. Meanwhile, we are the ones who are struggling. That thing, I won't do it again. I'm not a fool. That's why you don't do much. You just want to be in there. Oh, some of us go to work. Oh, this person, they don't work. That's why we want to come for Tuesday service. We will go to feel so late. Sometimes when Tuesday, we won't finish preaching by 10. Right now, he has not finished. He doesn't know that we we'll go to work. He doesn't go to work. That's why he thinks that we don't go to work. You see. You see. So, based on that, you don't really do much for God. You won't come for weekday service. When you come once, you won't come again. You come. It's like small, any small excuse, you use it to escape. Traffic. Meanwhile, traffic, you have stayed in the traffic and gone home. Why didn't you go back to work? You see. But here they were. They said, our, our father says he wants water from the well of Bethlehem. He does the water we will give him. Not another one from, from our hometown. Or just behind our wall. Where there are no Philistines. Ooh, ooh, you, and then when we bring it to her, he didn't drink. He poured it on the ground. Look, one guy, his sword almost cut my stomach. I just went back like this, the sword passed. And when I brought the water to him, he didn't drink. Next time, he should say he wants wine from a, a, a Babylon. He will go and get it himself. When we are here, we go and risk our lives and we come cry. You don't even drink the water that we went to get for you. And what kind of nonsense is that? Because you don't know how to serve someone. And these were, that's why you see, these were down and outers, losers, misfits, so they, they have no pride. But you are proud. Can't even wait for a meeting. Yes. Hold it out to the Lord. He said, Be it far from me that I should do this. Is this not the blood of the men that went in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore, they, he would not drink these things did these three mighty men. The, the down and outers are now called mighty men. <laughs> your name is about to change. I said your designation is about to change. Whatever name they used to laugh at you, that name is being changed tonight. And I be shy. The brother of Joab 
the son of Zeruiah, was chief. I don't know why you are standing, please. The, the chief of among three. You see? There's another guy called Abishai. He's chief among three. Meanwhile, there's some three who are the mightiest of the mighty. And he lifted up his spear against 300 men and slew them and had the name among three. Beautiful. Then he says, was he not most honorable of three? Therefore, he was their captain. How be it, he attained not unto the first three. There's first three, second three, third three, fourth three, fifth three. And you should be content if you are not in the first three. Accept it and allow it. Now some people, I'm one guy, he said that what system is this? You can't rise above those who are there. It's like the first three who are there, you want to attain unto, because you can also be chief among three who are not the first three, but they are also a three, and you are their chief. And it's a place, it's a rank. Misfits. Look at how they are describing them now. And Beniah, the son of Jehoiada, Hey, the son of a valiant man of Kabzeel, who had done many acts. He slew two lion-like men of Moab. He went down also and slew a lion in the midst of a pit in the time of snow. He was a wild man. Hey! He slew also an Egyptian, a goodly man, like a man of great stature. And the Egyptian had a spear in his hand, but he went down to him with a staff, a stick, and plucked out the spear from the man's hand and used his own spear to slay him. Yay, they are mighty men. Oh, ha! These things did Beniah the son of Jehoiada and had the name among three mighty men. Beautiful. Therefore, next one. He was more honorable than the 30, but he attained not to the first three, and David set him over his guard. Beautiful. I think this was the Benaiah who was, who was his chief executioner. Yes, he executed Joab yes. at the end of the, David's reign. He said, they should tell Solomon that they should kill. The Solomon instructed the man. He slew him. Yeah. Yes, he was a slayer. Yeah. Asahel, the brother of Joab, was one of the 30. Elhanan, the son of Dodo of Bethlehem. Shama the Harudite, Elika the Harudite, Helez the Paltite, Ira the son of Ikesh the Tekoite, Abieza the Anetotite, Mebunai the Hushatite, Zalmon the Ahuhite, Maharai the Netophatite, my God, Heleb the son of Bana. <laughs> And Nehut Netophatite, Aitai, the son of Rebai, out of Gibeah, of the children of Benjamin. Beniah, another Beniah, the Piratonite. He died of the brooks of Gash. Abialbon, the Abatite. Asmaveth, the Bahumite. Too powerful. Eliaba, the Shalbonite. Of the sons of Jashen, Jonathan. I hear your name being listed among the list of mighty men in the house of God. Shama, the Hararite. Ahiam, the son of Shara, the Hararite. Eliphelet, the son of Ahasbai, the son of Makatite. Of the Markatite, Eliam, the son of Ahitophel, the Gilonite. You see, this is where you see that we don't use family ties to serve God. Because this was Ahitophel who defected. Where in 2 Samuel 18, when um, Absalom rebelled, Ahitophel joined him. He later went and hung himself because he didn't receive his counsel. You see. But his son, eh, is that not so? Where's the guy? Hey, Eliam, the son of Ahitophel, was one of David's mighty men. He didn't kill David because his father uh, hung himself because of David. 
And some of you, when your brothers defect, then you say, it's my brother, it's my this. You are not spiritual. You are not spiritual. Be it known unto thee that you are not a proper Christian. That's not how we serve God. Uh, many homes, you find even this one goes to Presby, this one goes to Anglican, this one. My own father was a Methodist. His wife was E.P. Yes. And all his siblings and his father and mother were Presbyterians. But he was a Methodist. It's my mother, my mother church, my sister church. That's where all of us go. So I'm following it. You are not spiritual. Eliam, the son of Ahitophel, the Gilonite. He was one of the mighty men of David. Even though his father had joined Absalom, he didn't follow his father. Hezrai, the Carmelite. Parai, the Arbite. Egal, the son of Nathan of Zobah. Bani, the Gadite. Zelek the Ammonite, Naharai the Bearotite, Amor bearer to Joab, son of Zeruiah. Amor bearer, assisting another person is also a mighty man. It, you don't have to always be the head. Eh, we are together. I'm the senior pastor. So which of us will be the senior pastor? And Kwasia Sam, it's not it's not important who is the senior pastor, who is the junior pastor. Now nah, yeah, then you too can be an assistant, an armor bearer, and be a mighty man. It is pride. Yes. Pride. Vaunting of self. Vying for recognition and promotion. That makes you crave for, I must be the head of this group. Otherwise, I won't flow. I'm not the leader of the choir. Then you won't hear, you will not hear my voice. He will make me sing the solo, then be there. I will sit in the congregation. Ira and Arthrite. Garab, Garab and Arthrite. See? People of Ewe community. Yes! I'll say it. Ewe, but they are all together. They are flowing. Serving God. Pastor Philip is an Ewe. Pastor uh, Selassie is an Ewe. We are flowing. Reverend Daniel is one of my favorite pastors. He's an Ewe. I'm always saying that when he says, I'm blessed, it's, it's very powerful. Yes. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. Because Ewe say blessing. They, they don't easily say blessing. It's not easy for them to say it. It's a blessing. Try and be spiritual. When you see the list. And these were the down and outers. And yet in the beautiful holy scriptures. Their names are written. These were in debt. These were discontented. They were losers. They were misfits. They were vagrants. And yet the Holy Spirit. The mighty Holy Spirit. Has penned their names down. Yes, it doesn't matter your background. I know you didn't go to university, but you can be among the mighty men. I know you didn't do masters, but you can be among the mighty men. I don't say this church, dear, won't call university. They don't respect you. You are speaking like a fool. In the list, you find all kinds of characters. And if you have been to university, never look down on people who are in debt. Even if somebody owes you, you find him in the church. He's trying to serve God. Don't always use it against him. He has owed me for years. He has the tongues to be a oba on He has not paid. He has not paid. If he was to bring some of the money that he is using to do so in the church, at least he will clear some of his debts. <laughs> and in the final analysis, you see the name Uriah the Hittite. 
30 and 7 in all. Yeah. The, only, the only sad part about this list for me is the name of Joab. Joab was the, supposed to be their captain. And yet in this list, they don't give him special mention. It's pitiful. Because sometimes you can start well, but if you don't force and finish well, you will see that it's as if you didn't start. So, what made them come to this point where they are called mighty men? Sit down. What turned them into mighty men? First John 5 verse 4. First John 5 verse 4. It says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Whatsoever, beautiful word, whatsoever, it means it is irrespective of your background, educational background, family background, national background, whatever, whatsoever is born, the only condition is born of God. So you may be a loser, you may be a vagrant. You may be a loose, a down and outer. You may be a, a debtor. But once you are born of God, <laughs> you can overcome everything that is in this world. It doesn't matter. You, some of you, uh, you have used your background as, and excused yourself in many things. You can't do math. It's your background. Your father died early. You can't do science. Your father died early. You can't do English. Your father died early. And then your mother divorced your father and left your father. And your father had to go for another woman. And the women that he brought, each of them was a wicked witch. But I'm happy for the word whatsoever because it means that you may have come from a background where your mother and father were not together or that your father left your mother early or that they abandoned you under a, 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 an articulated track. It doesn't matter. What is important is whether you are born of God. If you are born of God, brother, this series is your series. I said this series is your series because you are going to overcome this world. And you overcome whatever is thrown at you. I never knew my father till I was 14. The other day I saw someone say, he never knew his father till he was 12 or so. I said, I have beaten you. <laughs> to this day, I am grateful to my father that he, should, he, didn't, he, he didn't come. He shouldn't have come and didn't come. And I don't know why. I don't know what to say. I don't need that explanation. I'm glad that he didn't. Because by the time I met him, I had been born again. I have been born of God. <laughs> I was a hard worker before I met him. I could wash. I could iron. I could clean. I could scrub. I could do everything. I, could, I, I was respectful. My stepmother never had given one moment of you have not done this you are not respectful you didn't do this never by the time i came to my father i was a proper born again born of god whatsoever yes there i was moving from day to day my father told me to go to Achimota. I was born again enough to obey him and do what he wanted me to do. And I went to Achimota school. When I was in uh, uh, primary school, going to secondary school, my mother said go to uh, Infanspim. I went to change it. <laughs> and I'm, I mean, a loving mother too. When the results came and I had got Prempe, he said, oh, 
Your uncle is there. It's good. He is in Bantama, which is also not far from Prempe. So it's not a bad idea. You see. But it was a blessing because the first day, first week, I went to SU and I never looked back in Prempe College. And when I met my father, I was going to sixth form. I done O level. He said, choose Achimota. I chose Achimota. My born again whatsoever is born of God experience had made me an obedient child. And it was in Achimota school that I met Bishop Dagwood Mills. And it is in meeting Bishop Dagwood Mills that I stand in front of you today. A blessed man. Anointed. A mighty man. One of the mighty men of Kabzeel. You have to be born of God. These games you are playing, that you are a Christian, it doesn't help you because we are here dying. I'm telling you that the world is a bad place. The Bible says that the whole world lieth in wickedness. We are seeing you and you is how. But me dami nyam ya se. So I say whatsoever. Into your school new, one uncle university, who you whatsoever they are, and born of God, it can work. Won't you bro for cra now we are born of God? It's something will happen because this world, no, you will overcome it. Because what it takes to overcome in this world is given to you because you are born of God. Most of us don't have this. This thing is like as if you are not born of God. As if you are not say, I'm born again. Recitation will be a will be. But the one who's really born again, this thing will happen. He says, and this then he tells you that what have you got? Once you have found you have really been born of God, mm. there is something that everybody can have, mm. which he says is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Whosoever, no, it's a come again, no, whatsoever, whosoever is the same thing. This one cried here, whatsoever, no, it's even more than whosoever is as if it's, it's almost like a human being, who, whosoever. Whatsoever, it can mean your business. It can mean your job. It can mean your marriage. Can be your ministry. It's a what? Is, is your ministry born of God? Or is just a jealous establishment of something to rival somebody? Is it born of God? Any vision born of God will beat everything in this world. Any church born of God will beat anything in this world. Any center born of God will beat anything in this world. They will say that it's only Muslims that are here. But you'll be surprised that 1,000 people will stream into your church. They will say, these days people don't like going for rehearsal and they don't want to join choir. But it's your choir born of God. If it is born of God, you'll be surprised that a 300 member choir will be standing to minister. I like the whatsoever because it cuts across anything. Your marriage, even your faith. Whatsoever, even your faith. Even, it means that even your faith, cry means that it's like it's not anything big. It's like GDNA, what do you born again? And can work. Does anybody have faith? This is what I'm going to be treating and, and ushering you into. Because the kind of testimonies I'm experiencing in these few days of people who have believed in the word that was preached and acted upon it and it's, it's too much. It's too much. And your testimony is coming to why don't I also have testimony? Your faith, even your faith. Even your faith. Even your faith. Faith now wana. Unyamia wosum no da. Oh no. No beji wo. Unyamia wosum no da. 
Oh no. What does it begin? I, I want the beginning part. Shadi. 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 The same God that you serve, Shedding, you see, be, be strong in the Lord, be strong, be strong in your faith. The same faith, yeah, which is not born again, no, we not me, we do, we did John, I want to finish, but I'm just finishing. I'm finishing. No, we, we won't sleep here, please. John 14, today they won't sleep here. John 14, 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, <laughs> the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works. That's mighty. Now if you are able to do small of the work that Jesus even did, won't you be a mighty person? Won't you be a great person? And greater works than these shall he do because I go to my father. Verily I say unto you, the works that I, if, if he that believeth on me, you see, so that's, that believing is the faith. You can do the works that Jesus did. You can do greater than he did. Too powerful. In the evening on Sundays, we are, we are talking about walking on the ancient paths. The Bible says that he that believeth, we who have believed, do enter into his rest. Believe him. Eh? It gives you some serenity and peace around you. It's unfortunate. That's why he said, let us labor to enter into his rest. Don't labor. Ah. You see, you are laboring for things that don't make for giant strides in God. You are laboring for, I don't know what to, I don't know what you are even laboring for. Right, car. We don't labor for car. We labor for something that brings cars that you can never finish driving. The kind of faith that generates, even when you are believing God for a car, do you know that it depends on how much you believe God? So some of you, your, your faith level is picanto. If, if, you, if ever you say you are believing God for Benz, you will know that it won't happen. Because But Picanto there, Wakuma Dasopa. You even go around one, when you see one park, you go around and say, Rade, this is my car. Oh, yeah, this is my car. That's what you have faith for. It's unfortunate that believers are not developing their faith. Faith is like a currency you have, like money. The more money you have, the easier it is to do things around you. Hey, you can build your house for 10 years. You can also build your house in six months. Oh, how? Oh, how? Oh, how? Who needs car? Ain't it now? 10 years. And I got no power. I said, who could done this? The man, he started the project. No, he's lifted the building. He's roofing it. Hey, this house is to collapse. So, oh, Jai. Oh, Jai. Stop that thing that you are saying. <laughs> God is going to inject you with more faith. My final scripture, then I, I, I pray and close. Don't worry. Next week, we'll have a What? Jesus answered, John 6, 6, 26. John 6, 26. Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles, but because you did eat the loaves and were filled. Look at, listen to what he's going to say. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life. So it means you can labor for something that's not just meat and drink and bread, but it is something that endures for eternity. 
Yes, you love it. I love it too. He says, labor, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him hath the Father sealed. Let's labor for something the Son of Man can give. Verse 28. Then said they unto him, What shall we do? Eh? What can the dead that you are making me love the scriptures? So what shall we do that we might work the works of God? You see, you must always ask a question and God will give you an answer. So what should we do now? What should we do so that we can also work the works of God? Jesus said, if you believe in me, you will work the works. So is he going to give us an answer? Verse 29, Jesus answered and said unto them, this is the work of God. The work of God that ye believe on him whom he has sent. It looks simple. That's why this says even our faith. If you can only, he says, those you just believe on the one whom he has sent. That's that, that's the simple act. And a way no one university, you can believe it. One co one you don't understand English, you speak only three. You can believe on him whom he has sent. That is why throughout our world we can see people who can speak good English, but they are anointed and they are making changes and making waves around. No alco school professor. You can't gather twelve people. This is the work. We need a Jumano. This is what he says. So labor for what endures to everlasting life. And can I tell you this? Labor to be a man of faith. Labor to be a woman of faith. Fight it. Sleepless night on it. Generate some belief in you that I can believe this thing that I am doing, this thing that I'm, I'm engaged in. I believe. Bah, I believe. You see, because <laughs> how do you know when you believe something? Because sometimes you really feel bah, that you believe and nothing actually happens. <laughs> and nothing happens for a long time. And actually you are doubting. But you, you have a feeling because Sanyana, the song was going and Sanyana, the tongues was going and the way you were feeling and the way your atmosphere was, you knew pa, that a net dear Mijidi. I really believe today, today dear, the atmosphere near dear no. <laughs> so is it based on feeling? Next week, I'll be explaining to you what faith is. Stand to your feet. You may have been called a misfit. You may have been, they may have ascribed to you that you are a useless person. They may have said that you won't amount to anything. That's the exact description for all these Adulamites. That's how they were described. Maybe they say you don't talk well. They say you don't, you're talking, nobody enjoys your voice. The sound of your voice is not nice. They say you can't sing. They say you can't do anything. Your English is very bad. You fit into the Adulamites. You fit. You fit. 
you didn't finish school so you fit you fit you finish school you also fit yes you fit maakayo lima hadu swaki bade lima ha zima kate mida watu asibale braba to kata ya badiri bila aike matori ya baba a door is opening a door i see something like a big person with big arms his the door opens forward he's he's pushing the door away so that a lot of people can walk through it may you join that group may you join that group may you join that group Take a moment to pray. Take a moment to just pray. Pray in the spirit. Pray in tongues. Mahande, Riaba, Ekaba, Ezolo, Bosaya, Nema, Dora, Motoria, Eriaba. Why am I on the Father, we thank you for your blessing. Thank you for the opportunity to hear words of life, words of hope in this dark and difficult world we live in. Thank you for the hope of eternal life and the hope of the scriptures and the hope of what your, your word can do to us. I pray for every vagrant, every debtor, everyone anyone know god who is a down and outer a loser they've described them as losers down on their luck they have nowhere to go nowhere to turn they have no fixed address they have nowhere to turn even for those of us who have somewhere to turn today we turn our eyes upon you we look full on his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace turn your eyes upon jesus look full on his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace lord we turn our eyes upon you may we see you clearly hear you clearly follow hard after you turn us into men that are mighty in god turn us no matter our background where we have come from what we have what we know what we have done what we have not done lord make a show peace make a show peace make us a showpiece of your glory make us showcase us to the world show the world that you can pick people that are down and outers and turn them into great mighty men in you 
we give you praise in Jesus name Amen If you are not a born again Christian today, it's a very important opportunity for you to give your heart to God and to be born again. Maybe somebody invited you, but you are not a born again Christian. I want you to lift up your hand so I can pray for you. Anybody here like that, come to me. If you have lifted your hand, come right here. Come. God bless you. Say after me, Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. Please forgive me for all my sins and wash me with your precious blood. Jesus Christ, thank you for dying on the cross for me. From today, I belong to Jesus. I will follow Jesus for the rest of my days. Please write my name in the book of life. I'm yours forever. Amen. We believe the Word of God has come to you and you have been blessed by this sermon. Subscribe to this channel and get notified about every video posted.